Hello FX fans and welcome back to another episode of Flight Tech. My name's Nathan and I'll be your captain on this journey. In this episode of Flight Tech we'll be taking a look at two great vintage classics, the Aichi Vau and the Jaguar 420. We take a look at the Mary Rose starter set. We show an exclusive behind the scenes from our day out in Duxford earlier this month. And finally, we look at your images. Well, a lot to get to, so let's get into it. My name's Nathan, we're Airfix, and this is Flight Deck. In the months which preceded the start of the Second World War, the Imperial Japanese Navy were arguably the best equipped force of their kind in the world, especially when it came to the carrier-borne aircraft they could call upon. In addition to the exceptional Mitsubishi Zero fighter, the Japanese Navy also possessed the Aichi D3A1 Val dive bomber, an extremely rugged aircraft which was ideally suited to the rigours of flight operation at sea, and one which was agile enough to defend itself once it had delivered its deadly payload. With the capabilities of its aircraft coming as an unwelcome surprise to Allied military planners in the wake of the Pearl Harbor attack, the well-trained crews of Val dive bomber units would take a heavy toll of Allied warships over the coming months posting incredible bombing accuracy statistics which were approaching 90% hit rates. Unfortunately for Val crews, their period of dominance in the Pacific would only last a few short months, as increasingly accurate anti-aircraft fire and more capable Allied fighters soon relegated this once feared bomber to secondary duties and kamikaze missions. Introduced in the 1966 London Motor Show, the Jaguar 420 was a compact sporting saloon in the familiar Jaguar mould. Powered by a 4.2 litre straight six, the 420 produced a good 245 brake horsepower and proved to be a good handling and powerful saloon of the period. First tooled in 1968, this impressive 132nd scale kit is made up of 114 parts. The FX model has been unavailable for some time and has therefore become highly collectible, making this new piece a worthy addition to any collection. A day before range launch at the Imperial War Museum Duxford, we took part in a special Spitfire event and unveiled our brand new super kit, the Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C in 24 scale. We chatted to Airfix researcher Luke and designer Poundjet about the unveiling. Hi there, I'm Luke, the researcher for Airfix. I'm at uh, IWM Duxford. Uh, and we're here to launch the new Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C uh, 24th scale super kit. So the Spitfire is so iconic because it was one of the first aircraft kits Airfix actually manufactured. Um, out, out in the 50s, uh, the BTK Spitfire as it's known, uh, wasn't the best uh, Spitfire but it's what started it all um, and from then it's just grown the relationship between Airfix and Spitfire. Um, we ha then had the Mark 9 in 72nd scale um, and what an improvement this 24th scale is on that 50s tooling. 
Coming in quite late into the Spitfire project, um, my main involvement was uh, with the schemes and the cockpit detail actually after 3D printing. Um, the, the cockpit wasn't very detailed after the initial prints um, and it's something that we had to work on quite a bit. Um, so you'll see the tremendous amount of detail we've managed to pack in there um, and I, I quite, I'm quite proud of the part I've played in that um, and, and the schemes that you see, um, including some fabulous um, French and American schemes as, as well as some RAF schemes. Uh, my favourite scheme is probably the French Air Force, the D scheme, uh, just because it's so bright and colourful. So um, for me, it's the tremendous amount of detail we've managed to pack into this 24th scale kit, um, into such an iconic um, design, RJ Mitchell's um, iconic Spitfire design. Um, and this is our next development on it. Uh, there's so many options within the kit to build. Um, I, I'd have a hard time choosing what to build. So with this being my first uh, Spitfire, or my first Airfix kit, I should say, uh, it's, I'm, I'm quite proud. I, I grew up down the road from the factory in Margate, um, and it's, it's a dream come true to be working there and releasing my first product with them. Um, and to know that I've played any small part in it is, is just a great accomplishment. The Spitfire exhibit here at Duxford is absolutely extraordinary. It's it's incredible the amount they've managed to pack into to one room and to see so many icons of the air in one space is, is truly magnificent. My favourite one on display is probably MH434, the one behind me. Um, it's a Mark 9B um, and it's one of the most famous Spitfires in the world. Yeah, the event's gone really well. Um, I think a lot of people are quite excited and we've got the plastic parts here. Uh, it's just nice to see it and have the presentation and then see it after. I mean, for those people who get to see it, they're quite lucky. It's the amount of detail that comes out of it. I think for me, uh, I'm looking forward to painting and building the cockpit and same with the engine. I think that's quite exciting and a lot of people are probably going to look forward to it. I mean, when you're seeing it in person, you're like, oh, there's quite a lot of detail for plastic parts, as in just bare plastic. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people are going to like it. Yeah, so we, we've set up in front of a Mark 9, which um, isn't the exact version, it's a Mark 9B, we're doing a Mark 9C as a model kit. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many got over, what, just about a dozen Spitfires in here or something like that? I mean, like, it's pretty cool. I mean, you can see one behind me, there's loads around here. There's the NHS Spitfire, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. Um, yeah, so there's a Mark 5C over there, which is something quite nice because I designed that at 70 second scale uh, a couple of years ago. So that's quite a nice experience, sort of looking at it, designing it, and then a couple of years later going back to it and having a look at it. Quite a nice surreal feeling. What do you think about our new super kit? Let us know in the comments below. The Mary Rose was a Carrick type warship of the English Tudor Navy of King Henry VIII. After serving for 33 years in several wars against France, Scotland and Brittany, she saw her last action on 19th July 1545. While leading the attack on the galleys of a French invasion fleet, she sank in the Solent. She now resides in the superb new exposition site in Portsmouth Historic Dockyard. This starter set in 1 400th scale includes everything you need to get started. With just 29 parts, it makes it much easier for a younger or beginner modeler. Poly cement, paint and a brush are included so you can get stuck in right away.
Finally, we take a look at some of your fantastic images from the past month. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in this month's episode. Please do let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see from Flight Deck this year. What 2022 products should we take a look at? As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Nathan, over and out.